it's not just Justin Fields trying to build himself up through the organized team activities portion of the Bears offseason program. A lot of other faces, players, familiar faces, new names at House Hall trying to help this Bears team take the next step. That's Deion Miller. I'm Dan Weeder. Got it right this time. We're going to figure out where this Bears team is headed. And I'm going to start you off today. We're going to try to pick three defensive players and three offensive players that we're looking forward to seeing something out of, right, between now and September. And so I'm going to kick us off here with a guy we heard from this week, tight end Cole Komet, right? And this is a guy who I think is very eager to have his breakout. Yeah. He's very eager to have that breakout one in a new system, which he talked about this week is, is, you know, the Shanahan based system that gets Justin on the move and can be tight end friendly at times. He said specifically, Hey, look, I watched the success that Robert Tunyon had with Aaron Rodgers and the green Bay Packers. I've watched specifically how George Kittle has flourished in the Shanahan system in San Francisco. I want some of that. Right. And some of that Cole Komet said is based on having continuity with the quarterback, which as you know, did not exist for his first two seasons in the NFL when it went Trubisky, Foles, back to Trubisky, over to Andy, over to Justin, back to Andy, then to Nick, then back to, you know, there's so much disruption in his growth with the quarterback continuity. And so I'm interested to hear what you think about where Cole Komet is headed in year three of an NFL career that has been anything but orthodox to this game. Do you know what I heard when he talked and even when he walked and sat down at the podium, I heard the influence of Jimmy Graham. I heard a guy who understands the importance of his position. He, I felt like he sounded more mature, more ready. Um, I know he spent a lot of time with the tight end you, and I love how he admitted it's mostly fun, but you can't be around the best guys at your position in the league and not feel like, not have some of that rub off on you, especially for a guy like Cole who wants to be great. He wants to be good at this. And, and you can tell he's working at it and he takes it very seriously. And I just felt like he is setting himself up at least in front of us and saying all the right words to have that breakout season. I, I love when he said what he wanted to uh, violent hits or something like that. He it he used the right words. He said craving and, violence through his blocks. That's yeah, violence through his blocks. And, craving violence through his blocks and, and making catches with his hands and not bodying them, you know? Yes, and doing doing the work it takes to be good at it. I hear that in his voice. And so I agree with you. This is a big season for him, right? And he is in front of a new coaching staff that nobody's job is safe. I appreciated what he said that his uncle played uncle played in the NFL yeah, and told years. him like play every day like you're about to get cut yeah and yeah that's that's heavy to tell a first second third year player but at the same time it's reality and for him to have a grasp of what that actually means and how how serious his job and opportunity is I think you hear that in his voice and making the time to connect with Justin and to be a support for him both with blocking and then to get downfield and to make those catches and hopefully hopefully get a touchdown this year and be a difference in that offense I hear it you hear it he's saying the right things but I hear a maturity about him that I think is going to help him on the field Every once in a while, we say things here, and it makes you laugh out loud like it did just a second ago when you say, hopefully he'll score a touchdown this year, right? Like, that's why you draft the tight end in the second uh, round, right? Because you expect him to score touchdowns for you. And whatever went wrong with the Bears offense for the last two years prevented Cole Komet from being the impact player, particularly down in the red zone, that he can be. And hopefully there's something in this system with Luke Getze that unlocks a thing or two that maybe gets that touchdown total up to yeah. three, maybe yeah. four, even five. Is it too much to ask for five touchdowns out of your second round? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. It's crazy. I also really appreciate Cole's honesty and candidness. And, and when he talked about re-enrolling at tight end U, which is obviously a program put on by Travis Kelsey and George Kittle, and they bring all those guys down to Nashville, just his honesty and saying, look, I'm going there to pick the brains of other guys, but mostly it's about going out in Nashville and having fun yeah. with dudes in the middle of a, a period of the summer that allows us to have fun. And so cool. Like I'm all for that, right? Like get yourself in a good headspace, go have some fun. And Cole is one of these guys that from day one has felt very um, comfortable, I think in front of the cameras and in front of the mics. And he's not trying to put on a a false face and he's not trying to say the right things. He's just up there talking to us like people and talking like he's a person, right? And it's refreshing to have that. Now that's got to translate over into how he, you know, elevates this offense in the next step. And And I do think to your point about playing every day, like it's your last, and, and with that fear of getting cut, he said, look, it can't be a fear. It's just got to be an urgency. And it's got to be an yeah. urgency that if it's eight o'clock at night and you've got a practice script that you're supposed to review, so you know what you're doing the next day, do it. Do it right. Yeah. Like just because you're probably not going to get cut the next day doesn't take you off the hook for those responsibility, which kind of relates back to the culture discussion we had on the previous video with Justin Fields tease to our audience to go check that one out. But yeah. So anyway, I think Cole is, is primed for that. 
No Why one on this team, Dan, no one on this team has the luxury to not think that they're going to get cut the next day. No one. No not one. Not even Justin Bieber. <laughs> no, you go down that route. No, there's no one has the space or has the, uh, should have the audacity to think I'm, I'm safe where I'm at. No, not at this point. All right. So do you want the opportunity to throw out a player either on offense or defense that you're looking forward to watching? Yes. Or do you want me to throw out a second one? All right, you're going. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay on offense just because we heard from him this week too. It's Tevin Jenkins. It's on my and, list. And I think that he was, he was aware of just how disappointing last year was from a Bears franchise standpoint for where he was drafted and his, his unavailability to be on the field. I think he's he's doing the right things. He's cleaning up his diet. He is trying to stay healthy. The backs are a tough thing, especially for linemen. I'm I'm nervous about how his back will hold up. He's but doing Pilates, did. though, at Superior Pilates in, in Lake Forest, and he's got his core strength. I smell a feature story on ABC7. <laughs> um, I, I appreciate that he's doing that kind of work. I. What I liked the most, though, Dan, was when he said, I know I have to earn their trust back. Yeah. And it felt like he was just aware that he let them down last year. And he I know he let himself down. He, he wasn't healthy. But gosh, that took a really long time for a guy his age to not get right. And and what they are expecting from him, they need him to deliver now. So. And, I, I really, he, that needs to happen. It just needs to happen. He speaking of someone who has to be practicing with urgency right now. It has yeah. to be Tevin Jenkins. No question. That's a great point. And, and, and it's, it's not earning the trust back of the bears. It's earning the trust of a new group, right? A, a new set of eyes with offensive line coach and a new head coach and new coordinator, a new general manager who have nothing invested in you. They're not the ones that traded up to get you. And so Tevin right. Jenkins was drafted by a former regime to play a different position in a different offensive system. And so nobody to me represents the challenge of transition more than Tevin, because you have to decide, can you make this work, right? right. If you're Ryan Poles, Matt Eberflus and Luke Getze, can Tevin Jenkins be a difference maker for you at tackle? Right now he's lining up at right tackle. It seems like he's more comfortable there. They put him back in the position where he played more of his games in college, and he seems to have yeah. taken to that more. But they're also asking him to change his body. They're also asking him to play a different way because this is a different system. They need him on the move more and they need him to be athletic and they need him to, to show that he can be agile and handle his assignments and do all those things in a, in a smooth and fluid way. And if it doesn't work out, all of a sudden that becomes not only a second round draft pick, but a traded up for second round draft pick that gets wheeled out to the curb. And it's another right. trap that somebody else is going to pick up. And you say, boy, there's another wasted asset that you totally. can't get anything out of. The Bears don't have to force the issue, but man, it would sure be nice to be able to turn him into a starter yes. where you don't have to then go find another pick, right? And so that's why I think Tevin Jenkins' entire situation in 2022 it will be fascinating to watch because it's in the Bears' best interest for this to work out, but they don't have to force the issue either. Right. Okay, your turn. All right. I'm going to go over to defense, and yes. we're going to go to cornerback Jalen Johnson. Yes, we, we heard are. from a week and a half ago, and then we came out to OTAs this week, and we saw Jalen running with twos for the majority of practice. And it was one of those head scratchers. And I said to Colleen Kane, look, like, look at some of the guys that they're rolling out with the ones. You know, the guys that you, you look down at your roster and you're checking, you're like, I don't even know who that is. And, and then and then Jalen's running with the twos, and you say, what is this? Well, Matt Eberflus says after practice on Tuesday, don't read into it. We're trying to get a gauge on where, where Jalen's conditioning is. We're trying to see how he practices. It's no big deal. Okay. Give him the benefit of the doubt for one week, right? If we're in minicamp and Justin J or Jalen Johnson is still running with the second unit defense, we've got questions, right? Yeah, and we've we got an investigation to do because this is your, your most established defensive back in that secondary suddenly not having his place. And now if it is just Matt Eberflus making a point like, hey, Jalen, you weren't at the voluntary new coach minicamp in April, so we're going to make you earn your, your, your starting spot back, fine. Go ahead. Send that message as your coach. I'm cool about that. But Jalen Johnson needs to be a part of your defense. And if he's not, then again, those questions need to be asked on, on what has happened to have him fall out of grace because he is one of the most talented players that you have on that roster in that position group. The reason I'm not, I'm believing what Eberflus said in some capacity is because they drafted to compliment Jalen Johnson. Like that was part of the reason they led defense in the draft. So I feel like they believe in him as a starter. But I agree with you about Eberflus trying to set his tone and standard around there when saying things like, that's why it's important for everybody to be here. It's important because we're trying to establish something here and, and to lay like that, that foundation that just gets us headed in the right direction. And with a new coach, you should be here. And I think he sent that message 
in his own way. I mean, we're still getting to know Flus, but I think he sent that message in his own way. And and I'm sure that Jalen heard that. Jalen is a competitive dude and he wants to be the best. He has a desire to be the best. And I think that's what we've seen. So if he feels like he's being overlooked, that that may be driving him. I mean, maybe maybe Eber Flus sees that in him too and knows that if I make this statement, he's going to push himself even harder and we need him to because we know he can. Well, and and so I followed up. Know. I followed up and said, listen, where does he exactly stand with you? And and Matt was very complimentary of his skill set, said we like his athleticism, the way he moves, we like the way he covers. We're gonna we're gonna have to see where this where this develops. And now it's just you I mean, it's one of those things you write down in the, the margin of your notepad and you say, check back on this next week, check back on this the week after that, check back on this at, at minicamp and make sure that there isn't more to this than than they're letting on. And so that's that's a note. Okay, you got somebody else for me? You owe me a defensive guy. I know I do, and I can't Can I, I'll give you one if you're okay, uh, give me one. Travis Gibson. Oh, yeah. Go. <laughs> yeah, Travis Gibson. Well, he has to take the next step because they have eliminated so many other guys around him and that have been in that leadership before him. And he needs to kind of step into that role that he can and take what he's learned from the guys from last year and watching a Khalil Mack and even a Robert Quinn and kind of take make his move now to be that that guy. And I think he can be. I think he's got the size to do it. I think he's got the drive to do it. He needs to to kind of continue to develop into that leader that they're looking for. But I think that it's important for him in that regard to, to be a loud voice, both on and off the field. Khalil Mack is gone. Mm -hmm. There's no promise that Robert Quinn's going to be here beyond Halloween, right? And so as the Bears look to the future, they need to hope that they have something of an answer at defensive end. And, and Travis Gibson may be that answer. They saw last year seven sacks, more importantly, five forced fumbles. And that's what's really caught the attention of the coaching staff is this is a guy who's had ball production, right? He can't just right. get to the quarterback. He gets there and gets the ball out. I think he had two strip sacks on Mike Glennon in that memorable Bears-Giants game yes. that we sat through in January last year. But Travis is also a guy that I think is, you know, if you're sensing a trend in the players we're, we're, we're noting here, it's class of 2020 draft picks yeah. that are entering year three and and, and suddenly have that, that sort of springboard of experience and comfort, right, that allow them to, to, to play freer. And it was interesting to hear new defensive line coach Travis Smith say this week that, that he just sees a, a, a enjoyment of the process and an enjoyment of the game in Travis. And when we talk to Travis, I think that comes through also. Where it it's just a, it, I don't want to say his personality is light, but but there is like a a charisma that's it's it's infectious and it's not intense. But yet when he goes to work, you can see sort of that passion turn into football field energy, right? Yeah, and, and football yeah. field energy is way different than locker room energy. And Travis seems to have that. And you hope if you're a Bears fan that he turns the corner both literally and figuratively, you know, getting after that quarterback this year and showing that he can be a double digit sack guy. It's just natural, right? Like he's just, right. he's just, it's authentic, authentic right. energy on the field. And I think that is contagious and can be more of that leadership, can have leadership just by simply being himself. And I did find it interesting that Eberflus talked about how they are monitoring that leadership all over the team because they're getting to know these guys. And I think you see a lot more of their personality and their approach to the game this time of year, because it isn't real football. It's just doing the menial work that has to be done and, and how they, how they do that work. I think they're really observing that to see who are going to be the loudest voices in the room for a bears team that needs that kind of leadership. There's no question about it. And, 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 and that defense is going to be climbing uphill for a little while, right? It's yeah. not the same star studded defense that it was in 2018. It doesn't have the same mastermind at yeah. the controls that it had in 2018. So we, we'll see where they had. Do you have one, one more for us before we roll out of here? I don't, I don't think so. Not at this point. I'm sure you do. Cause I'll give you one there. more from that same draft class, right? Because oh, I think this is yes. important. Darnell Mooney. Oh, right. see, I almost said that. And then I was like, no, we've discussed Darnell enough, but you're right. You're right about him. And and for me, where I'm most fascinated with Darnell is the outside world is going to get lost in this, this heated debate on whether he's a one, a one B, a two A, whatever it may be, trying to put a label on, on where he sits here. What I know about Darnell Mooney is whatever he is, he's going to get the absolute most out of his potential. Every ounce of potential he has, he's going to get out of it. He's going to put in that work. He's going to put in that homework, studying the playbook. He's going to put in that time developing chemistry as he's already done yeah. in the offseason, going to Georgia with Justin Fields, and he's going to get the absolute most out of himself. What that is, we can debate that for years. This Bears offense, 
void of proven playmakers is going to give him opportunities to go over a thousand yards again, right? To go be Justin's favorite target, to have games where it's eight, 130 and two, right? Like yeah, that, yeah. That, that's in the grasp of Darnell Mooney here. And so I, what I've appreciated about Darnell from day one here and what the coaching staff's past and present say about him is this guy comes in every day motivated to get the most out of himself while not worrying about some of this extraneous noise that, that tells you, you're not this, you're not that, you are this, you are that. Who cares? Like, just go right. be your best and then see what that adds up to at the end of the day. I agree. I, I think there there's always going to be this outside debate for sure. But Justin just said that he believes in those receivers that he has right now. Now, I understand it's May and he's trying to talk it into reality because he doesn't have that top notch weapon that everybody thinks he deserves. But his belief in them means a lot. His connection with Mooney means a lot. And and, and the work that they've done in the offseason to make that stronger connection, it means a lot, Dan. Like this is for an offense that's just looking for something, right? Like just something to kind of get on board and excited about and to have some sort of a flash. It's going to be the two of them. And it is on the table for Darnell to take a step and to be that guy. And I think he wants to be, and he believes he can be. And so it's, it's an important off season in that regard for him to be ready to take that step because the bears need him to do that. Whether they win four games or they win eight, they, he, they need him to be a big reason why they're doing it. And, and they need this offense to go up two, three, four levels so that this city Please. stops banging its head against the wall and this program stops being so repetitive with the, the criticism of this offense, right? Like this offense has we to don't make, repeat make ourselves. the growth. Right? My God, it's like you say the same things over and over again. I'm just I know, kidding. I know. We've got a long march. Obviously, training camp's around the corner. We've got the mini camp in June. There are things to monitor, even with a 6-11 and 11 team that you have trending down towards 4-13 and 13 this year. Please let that not. I want to be. I desperately want to be wrong, Dan. So hopefully they prove me wrong. Let's see where they take this, and we'll we'll be there every step of the way. That's Dion Miller. I'm Dan Weeder. I did it right twice now. You did. Which you point. did. You're getting better. I'm this so proud of you. Of you. <laughs> take care, everybody.